Hey, what's going on guys? It's Mike from Fieldcraft Survival. I'm with George on the ones and twos. Just kidding, he's monitoring the camera because I mess up a lot. But anyways, I'm here inside my 2016 Toyota 4Runner. It's a baller vehicle. It's a pretty nice, sweet vehicle. I've got 120,000 miles on this 2016 Toyota 4Runner. It's a trail edition before Toyota got smart and decided to make the TRD and you couldn't get the trail anymore. It's got all the trim, trim? That, that works. It's got all the trim of the uh, TRD edition without the cost and uh, all the badges that the TRD model had. Anyways, I digress. I like this Toyota uh, 4Runner, but this is my mobility rig, one of my mobility rigs. We'll get to that FJ4 you guys have been asking about. I wanted to do this video and talk to you guys about the basic hemorrhaging response kit and the modular visor panel that we use. People have been asking, so I'm going to be telling. And so I want you guys to understand why you would use this inside your vehicle. Well, let's think about it. I'm inside my vehicle. 30,000 people a year die every single year in America from car accidents, mostly teens and senior citizens. No offense. But when I'm in my vehicle, if I had a catastrophic event, like I roll my vehicle or my legs are crushed up under a steering wheel in an accident, I need ready access, immediate access to life-saving equipment aid bag in the back, molly attached panel behind the seat, that's all good and stuff, but you're not gonna be able to reach that stuff in an extremist situation, which means a bad situation. So what's the answer? The solution is have it in arm's reach. So right here, bam, pretty simple design. It's nothing fancy. We're not cry precision. We're not making anything that's gonna uh, break the bank. Uh, but we, what we are making is high quality equipment. We uh, teamed up with Arbor Arms, which is a local manufacturer and designed this modular visor panel, which is Velcro, the female portion of the Velcro. And then this is adjustable with three different straps. I put it on my visor, and then I have this little guy, this little doodad right here. What I like about this is we went back to the drawing board because it was like, how do I access this equipment for particular uses? Basic hemorrhaging response kit or stop the bleed kit on one side and cat tourniquet from North American Rescue on the other. So. Pull the red tab, bam, that gets me a tourniquet. Pull the 550 cord, bam, that gives me my basic hemorrhaging response kit. Hemorrhaging is such a hard word to say. It should be basic bleeder kit. Let's just go with that. Basic bleeder kit, BBK. Let's go BBK. And so when you have that set up in a little Philcraft logo right there, no extra charge. Actually, there was an extra charge, it's like five cents. Not a big deal though. George is winking at me, maybe 10 cents. Um, so the cool thing about this, kit is that you have ready access which means you get to grab it within the arm's reach of where you're at if you have a north american rescue tourniquet inside of the back of your molly attached panel on the back of your swing gate thing in majiggy that's cool but you're not going to be able to get that in an extremist situation i've seen dudes who have rolled vehicles and they have tourniquets in their center console their glove box again not going to be there it's going to be upside down and probably somewhere in the back with the rest of your crap so we have to be able to have ready access by being able to grab it and pull it away. Look, I didn't design this. Uh, it's been thought about, um, but we, we put it out there because I use this in contracting. I also, I use this concept as far as thinking and executing and training um, in my military days. All this makes common sense to me. Like I need first aid equipment. I, I don't just need first aid equipment when I'm in combat. I need first aid equipment when I'm in the great United States of America. Um, what I'm going to do is going to give you a class on the basic hemorrhaging response kit and the cat tourniquet so you guys can have additional information on top of this that's just added bonus to make you better in everyday survival. So let's get to it. Okay, so hey, I got a BHRK here. This BHRK is the basic hemorrhaging response kit in conjunction, in partnership, in cooperation with North American Rescue and Fieldcraft Survival. We teamed up with them. Look, we are not gonna be manufacturing medical equipment. They manufacture med equipment. We got with them and said, hey, these are the pieces we want put together. We wanna to assemble a really good kit that's good for an IFAC, which is an individual first aid kit, but also good for the, the modular visor panel. And we wanna ensure that everybody has great access to great equipment. So here we go, bam, modular, Visor panel BHRK stop the bleed kit includes things that you need to stop a bleed from a puncture wound. Yes, a puncture wound. 
I have a brachial, I have a femoral bleed in my legs. That's different. That's going to be addressed with a tourniquet, which I'll go over in a second. What I want to talk about now is the specific equipment that, I, that you need to stop the bleed from a gunshot wound, also a puncture wound. Remember, the way it works is this is your flesh. This is the inside of your flesh. This is the puncture wound. As it goes inside the puncture wound, it creates a cavity. That cavity or this avoid has to have material inserted into it in order to stop the bleed. If it didn't, imagine you're in a cave. Yes, a cave, a cave of cavitational wounding. It would be dripping from the ceiling because you have nothing to fill the gap or fill the void. Well, I'm going to fill your gap for you using combat gauze. All right, so here's how we do it. We take S-rolled gauze. This is never enough. We, this, I mean, you could never have enough S-rolled gauze. This is what you're going to use to stuff the wound in conjunction with rolled gauze, which includes a quick clot. Yes, a coagulant, something chemically that allows for quicker coagulation of blood in conjunction with gauze. That's going to fill the void. Right? And then on top of that, we're going to use a mini responder four inch compression bandage. Look, you could fill the void all you want to, but if you don't use compression, you're not stopping anything. But what I mean is you could fill the void with material, but if you don't compress the material against the inside of the cavitational wounding, you're not going to stop the bleed necessarily. I've seen it happen, but it depends. There's a lot of variables. You need a compression bandage to wrap full circle in circumference and compress down with compression pressure and manual pressure. You need manual pressure, meaning you need to put your hands on the wound in order to create pressure to stop the bleed. That's super important. Obviously, I got a good pair of gloves because if you're dealing with blood, you're dealing with AIDS. Nobody wants AIDS. No offense to people with AIDS. I want to have gloves if I'm dealing with any kind of blood, uh, fecal material, or spit, saliva. Okay, let's move on. North American Rescue Cat Tourniquet. Whoa, that wasn't even planned. Cat Tourniquet. This right here is a $29.99 piece of equipment that will save your life. Look, I'm not going to uh, give you a full block of instruction on how to apply a tourniquet in its totality. So all you medics, look, I'm a TCCC guy. I'm TCCC certified. Uh, I've got my EMT qual back in the day. Uh, I've been around combat medicine. I've stuffed gunshot wounds real life. I've applied tourniquets real life. But again, I am not the subject matter expert because there's guys who are in EMS, EMT, paramedics, Good kudos to you guys. There's special forces medics. All these people are more educated and more experienced than little old Mike. Uh, but I will give you the basic skill sets that I teach at 511 Tactical and that I teach for my own company, Fieldcraft Survival. Okay, so here we go. In principle, this, how, this is how a tourniquet works. In circumference around the extremity, around the arm, around the leg, you have to have 360 degree pressure applied um, Let's, let's say in circumference. What happens is when you turn this, let's call this a rod, right? Because this is a windlass, but let's call it a rod. This used to be a stick with a cravat in my days when I joined the Army in the 90s. You turn this and it creates pressure. This pressure constricts the circumference and then gives equal pressure around the extremity, which is super important in the principal understanding of stop the bleed. Look, tourniquets aren't new. We were applying tourniquets in, in the Civil War between 1861 and 1865. Surgeons were using them to stop the bleed so they could surgically remove with hacksaws wounded limbs of Civil War soldiers. And then we issued these out in the field and people were using them in dumb ways, so they pulled them back. That's some history for you. Just, that's a bonus. All right, so if I'm going to stage this, Raul Martinez, one of our guys, a tactical trainer uh, for Phil Craft Survival, was talking about how... It doesn't matter how you stage it necessarily, as long as you're prepared for it always. This could be in a ball of crap. If you could take this because you understand principally how it works and you've, if you've done it again and again and again and again and again, then you are trained. You cross the T. What I want you to do is be prepared to apply this no matter how it comes, but I want you to prep it. Two ways to prep it. One time, by putting an eight inch tail on the end of this and then folding it back on itself, leaving this Velcro open so you could apply the windlass and the groove. 
This is good for arms. Because typically if I'm wounded with one arm and I could put this on, I could swing this around my other dead arm. But imagine legs. How are you going to swing this over your leg if you're sitting in your car seat and you have a femoral bleed? That might be difficult to do. So we need to stage it another way. Another way to stage it is opening it up and simply folding it back on itself, utilizing the Velcro. So with no arms, mom, I'm grabbing here and then apply this under my leg. Remember when you apply this, this red tab always goes towards the inside of the heart, like so. Why? Look, it's simple. I've heard dudes describe this weird. It's simple. If this was the other way, how am I gonna pull it across myself in order to constrict the, uh, the uh, tourniquet on my arm? That's difficult. But if I'm pulling it towards myself, it allows me to gain control and then pull it tightly. Taut is what it's called, taut. So I wanna be able to do this taut. So if I do this also, I could stage it because I'm putting this high up on my arm in between the deltoid, the tri and the bi. I could take this, rotate it up where it needs to be, where I have control of the windlass, cinch it down all the way around. And remember at this point, the Velcro, this little bit of Velcro is the only thing holding this on. So I need to turn this windlass out as tight as it will go until it hurts so bad. And then once it's on, I'm going to bring this Velcro piece over, mark the time that I applied the tourniquet after I uh, check it. Now, here's, here's what I might do. I've seen this used before, and I think it's a valid uh, consideration. If I have this opening gate and my arms are teeny weeny, uh, like mine aren't, um, then I could take all this slack and put it through here to ensure that I don't rip it loose. Because again, that's the only thing holding this thing on. Comes down like this. And then I put this tab like that. And if this pulls up, it's not coming up unless you have extreme force on it. But look how easy it is to break this loose. You're moving me, we're assessing the casualty, we're moving it, and then bam, it comes loose. All that comes loose, and then you're in a bad situation. Remember, tourniquet is meant for extremity bleeds to stop the bleed of a brachial or femoral arterial bleed. They are the major highways that deliver blood to your pump house. If you have a severed femoral artery, for example, you need to put this on. One of the considerations that I've been told before in the past in the EMT training was, we don't necessarily want to apply these. Why? Because you might lose the, the limb. That is a complete farce. I have special forces buddies of mine who have had these applied to their arms and legs for hours and hours and hours. One guy, six hours. So you're in the continental United States. The only way to fix a arterial bleed is with surgery. You're going to a hospital. So if you're going to a hospital and you're looking at this as an option, there is no other option because the option is you figure out, figure out principally how do you apply a tourniquet or you use a tourniquet or you die. Those are three simple choices. I'm putting a tourniquet on. I don't care about the extremity. Carbon fiber limbs, I have lots of buddies with them. It's not a big deal. Live to fight another day by applying these tourniquets to your arms and legs. Look, this isn't an in-depth course. This is meant to tease you a little bit because I want you to get TCCC certified. There are different certifications that you can do online, in person, even on YouTube. I recommend out of all that, Tactical Combat Casualty Care because you get a little bit of the March algorithm, which is the best algorithm, that includes massive hemorrhaging or bleeding as a number one choice, not the ABCs that airway as a number one priority. You'll die faster from bleeding from a femoral bleed or a brachial bleed than you would your airway being compromised. I promise you, you'll just simply pass out. But if you just bleed out, then you'll just bleed and you'll never wake up and that's what, that'll be the end of it. So the March algorithm in TCCC is super important to learn. We are a resource for that. PhilCraftSurvival.com, you can sign up for TCCC. In fact, we have a course coming up soon. Check out the link below. Listen, if you like the content you guys are getting, simply subscribe. I am open to criticism, unless you're a troll. If you're a troll, I'll block and delete you. That's, why, that's how we roll. But if you're somebody who's all about lifting people up and then giving them constructive criticism, and you wanna hear something. Hey guys, I would like to hear this. We listen. I personally check all the comments myself. Leave the comment in the bottom, subscribe, and remember, this is an open forum for discussion. There's a lot of people in this industry and space who are dictating like Kim Jong-il. Well, you're not Kim Jong-il, dude. Relax. 
It's an open forum for discussion and preparedness, and that's what we do. PhilCrossSurvival.com. Till next time, stay alert, stay alive, guys.